So in this exercise we're going to look at using the recolor adjustment and curves adjustments for iPad 2 using Affinity Photo version 2.5. Now these are great examples for colorizing black and white images. And the image I'm using is Talas Alves. It's a black and white image from Unsplash. You can find it there. It's very nice. Now let's get right to it. Open your black and white image in Affinity Photo for iPad. Hopefully you are by now familiar with the iPad menu. As you are aware, it's quite different to the desktop version. Some things are a little more difficult to find than others. So in this tutorial, I'll use lots of screen grabs. I'll start with the first one with my image loaded. You'll find the image link in the description and it's right there if you just want to copy that down. Obviously from YouTube you can't click on that, but you could write it down, it's not that difficult. And there's the image and you can follow right along. Now this is a clean slate, so let's get started, shall we? Today we're going to take this beautiful black and white photo and bring back its colour. The first thing to do now is to set the first recolour adjustment. So tap the Adjustment Studio option that's over on the right hand side there, just below the brush, the fourth option down. You can select either List Mode or Image Mode from the Adjustment Studio in the little sandwich next to the Adjustment Label. So at the, at the moment it's in Image Display, but if you put it in List Mode, it might be a little more easy to find your way around it. Toggle the Adjustment Studio List Mode so it looks like this for the time being. We're going to select Recolor in a moment. So you scroll down till you find the Recolor option. This will bring up the menu you see here. There'll be a list of options of image adjustment types. Scroll down until you see the Recolor one and select it by simply tapping on it. Your image will change to look like this. Notice the Hue control and the Saturation control pop up there with the word Recolor Adjustment at the top of the box. The Hue and Saturation are how you control the working colour of your image. Now to set the Hue and Saturation. You can see the Hue in two ways. Either tap the Hue icon and type a number into the little calculator type pop-up or scroll your finger or pen gently up or down within and near the Hue icon watching the hue change as you do so. So let's set the hue first. Personally I prefer to click on the numbers and type the numbers into the little calculator, but whatever suits your uh, method of working. We don't want the colour to be that saturated, as it's really only the background colour in the end. So we need to desaturate it using the same control method as we used for the hue. So I've got the hue set to about 222. It's actually 222.5 just there. Set the saturation to about 25. Again, you'll see the overall image colour change as you scroll the circle controls or type in your numbers. To get the right colours, you might need to do a considerable bit of experimentation, but that's the fun of it, isn't it? We need to have the hue applied to the background not the girl. So we're going to select our brush and then paint in black to remove this blue from the girl. Remember if you paint in black it removes colour, if you paint in white it adds colour. Now we want to colour the person's skin. So select the paint brush and with it selected your colour dot will change to black. Set the brush to about 115 pixels I found works nice with 100% and 100% and the hardness. I had to set the hardness to about 10% but initially you might leave that at zero. Now you can see on the brush controls there on the left hand side there's a little white dot just above the lower control. Now by clicking on that icon you can switch that dot from one side to the other and that controls hardness, flow and op opacity. Now you can colour the 
person by swiping your finger or pen with a suitable size pen point over the person. Begin painting in black over her to remove that blue colour you can see there. Do not paint her lips or any other part you want to recolour differently. You can see the changes as I go. I have set my brush size to about 115. Remember, do not paint her lips or any other part you want to recolour differently. Now let's bring some colour back into her hair. So select the layer studio and then the background layer again so we can position the next recolour layer correctly. You can see it here. An important step, don't forget it. You can't recolour an already recolour adjustment layer. So let's go back to the adjustment studio and select another recolour adjustment. And only the face and hair now change to the recolour colour. <coughs> you will immediately see any patches you've left in the paint job. To fix them, step back with the history arrows and make your repairs. That's easy enough to do. For this recolour, make it some sort of a yellow or brown, a brownish yellow if you like, and set the hue to 20 and the saturation to 60. Somewhere around a nice hair colour to suit your image, and a little less saturated. Then instead of painting in black to remove it from all the rest of the picture, we're going to invert our mask. And for this you need the Channel Studio. To invert that layer only, by selecting the Channel Studio, now make sure you've got that recolour layer selected, select the Channel Studio and within the pop-up, select the three dots next to the recolour adjustment layer. Then select Invert to invert the mask on that layer. The image reverts to what appears to be the original for that layer. Very mysterious. You can see the two recolour layers in the image, which is just what we want. So the recolour is applied to nothing right now, but if we paint in white, we can bring that colour back in. So I'll just flip these colours black to white. Select the new recolour layer that you just made. Check that you have set the hue and saturation correctly for the hair colour. Hue 20, saturation 60. And we're going to paint in white over the top of her hair. Select the brush, then flip the black to white if you haven't done so already. Set the brush to about 115 pixels in width. And with white now selected and brush enabled, we can paint. So, you get the idea. I have the brush size set to a reasonable size, about 115 pixels. If you go over an edge, inadvertently painting a forehead or some other part, you can use the back arrow to step back, or switch to the eraser and correct the overrun. Switch back to your brush when corrected. Otherwise you'll erase everything, and you don't want to do that. And you can see the two layers there, the one we're working on, and the previous one. They add themselves upwards in sequence. Now she's got nice brown hair. The background's a suitable blurry sort of blue colour. You can actually change that if you want to when you're first starting out. But we'll just leave that as it is for the time being. Select the layers and highlight the background layer again. We're still hard at it here. You'll notice I've got that background layer locked here, so you can't inadvertently change it. Select the Adjustment Studio and apply a recolour. The face will show, as you see here, with the recolour in red again. Invert your recolour layer the same as you did previously. That is, select the Channel Studio, the three dots, and select Invert. This leaves the face the original black and white. Set your hue and saturation. I'm making this a desaturated orangey brown. Kind of a skin tone, really. But remember, this, this young lady looks like a film star or an actor or something. So it's a little bit not ordinary, and we can't leave it like it is, because 
it's a very deathly pale colour and it's not very flattering at all. So we'll set the hue to 25 and the saturation to 43. Then select the brush and paint the skin tones, still keeping the white colour dot remember. If at any time you want to change the colour, just tap on your adjustment layer and then you can change the colour by modifying the hue and saturation. Don't paint her lips or the cigar. We're coming to those. Now we do the lips. Select the image background layer again, apply a recolor layer, invert it and move that layer to the top of the stack. Otherwise you won't see what's happening. You can see I've got it moved right to the top of the stack there. Leave the hue and saturation at 0 and 100. Enlarge your image so you've got some control over it and carefully paint over the lips. You can immediately see the spots that need touching up and you can see them there on the girl's face. Hmm, I'll have to go back and touch those up. But I won't at this stage because I want them there so you can see what I'm talking about. I'll leave the cigar for you to decide on a colour because finally I want to recreate the smoke. You can see the smoke's a couple of different colours there and we don't really want that. Turn off all the layers, you can see they're all turned off there, and select the background layer. And using the smart selection tool, select all the smoke plumes. Now you can see in the right hand side I haven't got the background layer selected in that image, but I should have. I must have done it in the next, very next image. Because we've got to select all the smoke. And you can see the little crawling ants lines, the little dotted lines around the smoke. It doesn't have to be exact or precise because we're going to work on that. Select Refine and set the output to a new layer. Now you can see it up there. In your control, set new layer to what you want it. And that will, apply, that will create a new layer, obviously. Move the new layer to the top of the stack. You can see it there. Now turn all the layers back on and set the smoke layer to 50% opacity. There's your, there's your smoke neatly back in place. And you can adjust that a little bit as you go. In fact, if you apply a blend mode to it, it will make it even better. A multiply is probably a good blend mode, but that look, doesn't look too bad the way it is. So it's time for a note of caution. When you're colouring an object, a photograph, you must really be careful <coughs> excuse me, to only colour the part you want coloured for that step. Think of each colour as a separate step. Now let's take a quick look at doing the same thing, only this time using curves adjustment and not recolour. Essentially the same, only different. Using curves adjustment to recolour images. Now she's quite different there because I wanted to be able to differentiate the two quite visibly. Open your black and white image in Affinity Photo for iPad. Select the Adjustment Studio and in that select the Curves Adjustment, not the Recolor Adjustment this time. Now you can see I've got it in List Mode so it's fairly easy to see. And Curves Adjustment obviously being alphabetical that list, it's near the top. Your screen will look something like this. Tap the master word in the channels drop down and select red. You can see the word master there and it'll display red just below it. On my screen, which is an iPad Mini 6, it's fairly small. If you've got a big iPad, it may well all fit on the screen and you'll see red, green and blue there. And you can scroll up and down to the one you want. We want the red channel. The box with the diagonal line will show. And this is your control. You can see you've got RGB, color space, red channels and the diagonal bar there. Tap the diagonal line in the box. The diagonal red line will show. 
Using your pen, change this line to a smooth S shape, similar to that shown. This will change the image colour to a red hue, not a blazing red, but a softer red that we've got there. Your image now showing the shape of the baseline in the graph. Now we're going to do the woman's lips in a bright red. Go back and highlight the background layer again and create a new curves adjustment layer. Select the red channel again and this time change the curve dramatically to force out nearly pure red. Now with this new layer selected, select the channel studio and invert the layer, same as we did previously. Again, we can now select the brush tool and paint in the lips with the white brush suitably sized, just as we did in the first part of this tutorial. Carefully adjust your brush size and if you go do overruns, just use the eraser or the backspace key, the, the back arrow key to it's the, the undo history key, I think they call it. I forget the name of it, but it doesn't matter. I've enlarged the image to get a better control of the painting. And you can see if you enlarge the image, you've got a lot of fine control over your brush then. And you can see the detail around her lips. And you'll notice that the cigar has gone a browny colour now because there's a red hue in the entire image. Next, we'll do the hair. And you can see how very similar this is to the recolor adjustment, only you're using curves. And with the curves, you can get really fine control, as you can with recolor, but this one you can kind of see what you're doing. So next, we'll do the hair. To achieve this color, you can see where I've moved the curved lines to. When you're happy, invert the layer, as before, and paint in the hair. That's very bright. Let's suppose she's got some stage lights on her, because that's very bright. But never mind, you get the idea. Here we have the second version nearly complete. You can see the curves layer. The smoke layer is set to 50% opacity, and the blend mode is set to lighten. Lovely. That's all, folks. So thanks for watching. I hope you find this really useful. You can use it on colours, not just black and white. So don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, click on the thumbs up for a like, and the bell to be reminded when new videos appear. I really appreciate your interest.